Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how we can load up a 3D model into DaVinci Resolve's Fusion page in order to use that within a video. So because we're using a 3D model, everything 3D is usually done in the Fusion tab for DaVinci Resolve. So I'm going to load in a new Fusion composition into the timeline, and I do that in the Edit page by going to the Effects Library, Effects, and then Fusion Composition. So I will drag this right in here. I'll go over to this new Fusion composition, go over to the Fusion tab, and now we're going to want to load up the model. So there are several supported formats for DaVinci Resolve, such as OBJ and FBX, and Alembic files as well. Uh, if you want to import one of those, you go up to the Fusion menu at the top. We're going to be doing an OBJ file, but we're going to use the FBX scene importer to load that in. So with that, I have this OBJ file on my computer, so I'm going to load that in here, open it up, and we'll get a pop-up window showing the things that we want to import. If you have any animations for the model, those would show in here. In this case, there's no cameras in the OBJ file or lights, so I have those unchecked. The only thing I'm going to be loading in here is the meshes and the material node. Though if you were loading in a complete scene that also had cameras and lights, you could import those really quickly there as well. So I'm going to hit OK here, and we're going to get three nodes. We have the Mesh node over here, and we can over over a node to see what type of node it is. So FBX Mesh 3D. And over here we have the Blend Material node. So hovering over it, you can see it's a blend. And then a Transform 3D Adjust node as well that we can use to control the positioning and the rotation of the character. So if I load this into the preview window, the Transform 3D node, and we zoom out, we can see where the model is located and its size and rotation. Uh, we can see that it's not really in the right rotation here, so I'm going to take the X rotation for the Transform 3D node and put negative 90 as the value for that node so that the character is standing upright inside of the 3D scene. And then you may find that the character is also way too large for the scene. It, it really depends on how far out you want the camera to be and the size of the other models you may be loading in. I'll take the scale and I'll lower that down to 0.1 so that the size of the model is more reasonable compared to the 3D grid that you see down there as the base. Now, um, the character is right now completely white because we don't have any of the image textures applied properly to the material. So to have it render all the facial features and that kind of thing, we're going to need to grab in the texture materials. So in this case, I'm going to just drag these three image files into the nodes section of DaVinci Resolve right there. And I'll delete the merge nodes because we don't actually want those. But for each of these nodes, I'm going to rename them based on which image file they have. So underscore G in this case is referring to the glossiness, so I will call this just G. And the next one is D for diffuse color, um, so I will call that just D. And then the third one is N for normal mapping, so I'll call that just N. And we need to feed all of these into this blend node. So the order for that is going to be the diffuse node, followed by the glossiness node, and the normal mapping node. So diffuse goes in first, and when we do that, you'll notice that the color of the person shows immediately, so that's good. And next, we'll add in the glossiness and the normal mapping. Now, the glossiness and the normal mapping isn't going to show anything right now because the scene doesn't have any lighting. So the next thing we can do is take the transform 3D node, feed that into a Merge 3D node, which will have cameras and lights attached to it. And then this Merge 3D node will be rendered with a rendered 3D. And then that will be feeding into the final media out. And this will give us the image that we can actually use on our edit page for building our actual video and resolve. But for this 3D node, we're going to need some lights. So I'm going to right click and add a tool do 3D light ambient light, and I'm going to link that up to Merge 3D. Once again, you'll see nothing here because lighting and shadows aren't enabled. So to have that enabled, we need to go over to the Render 3D node and check Lighting and Shadows. And we can also make this Render 3D the preview on the left. Okay, and now the character is receiving some lighting, and we can view that in the Render 3D, or the Media Out Preview, rather. Uh, but in order for us to really see the person and the lighting, properly on it, we're going to want to add a camera node and angle that at the person. So let's add a camera 3D node to the Merge 3D, and we'll adjust the position 
until we can see the full body in view. So adjusting the gizmos, we can zoom out, get the woman fully in the middle of the frame, and that lets us see things a lot better. Um, now with just the ambient light, that means everything in the scene is going to be receiving just a little bit of light, but evenly applied across everything. So what we can also add in is a directional light, uh, which will have a light coming in at a certain angle, also applied evenly across the scene. So let's do a directional light and drag that into the Merge 3D. And when we do that, you can start to see some of the crevices and the areas that are receiving less light um, on the person's body. But uh, right now, the light is angled straight in front, which isn't very interesting. So what we'll actually do here is change the rotation of the directional light. Note that the actual position we put this in the scene doesn't matter at all. It's only the rotation. So we'll take the rotation on the transform tab of that, angle it down or up a little bit. <laughs> if we want it to look like a horror movie, uh, angle it up. Uh, but let's, uh, let's make that something a little bit more normal there. So something like negative 15 degrees, more like a sun from the sky. So this gives us the basic setup of our scene. If we went over to the edit page now, we'd be able to see the model being uh, rendered as a 2D image, which we could use as part of our video or title screen or something like that. Um, to make it a little bit more interesting and to actually render something more than just a purely static image over this fusion composition, we could have the camera's position adjust based on the timing in the scene. So frame zero, we can keyframe all of the rotation and translation properties. And what I'm going to do is use a target so that the camera is always focused at the woman, regardless of its position across the scene. So I'm going to hit use target. And I'm going to pick a target um, somewhere on the woman's body, kind of centering her on the shot. So let's put it around there. And now I can go to the final frame of the video. And I'll just reverse the Z position. So I'll do negative 600. And this will set a new Z translation keyframe at the final frame of this fusion composition. So if I was to play it now, the camera will always be looking at the person, but the camera's position will be moving through the person. And uh, this might be something a little more interesting that we can render out. So I'll adjust the position up here so that it's more of an overhead shot. And uh, the target tool is really useful because it will always keep track of that position that we're trying to focus on with very, very little effort. So now we'd be able to take this fusion composition scene and have all of it render out as a clip that we can use inside of our edit page timeline. So over here, everything in the fusion tab is now this fusion composition clip, and we can use that in our video however we wish. So that's pretty much going to be it for how you can load in a 3D model to DaVinci Resolve, add in all of the material texture images so that it will render properly and to use it within your fusion composition clips. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.